Hi everyone. A couple of weeks ago I did a video on creating random vertex colors with random flow and today I want to have a look at how we can create random panels with random flow. I have prepared a couple of objects here. I'm going to start with this elongated plane and in order to create geometry with random flow we need to make a polygon selection. If I tab into edit mode here we only have one polygon. I'm just going to subdivide this a couple of times so we have some geometry to work with. And then we need to tab back into object mode and use shift and Q to open the random flow main window. And the option that we're going to have a look at is the second one from the top, which is random panels. At the top of this window, you have the operator presets. If you open this, you will find your presets in there and also the option to restore the operator defaults. With the plus and minus buttons on the right here, you can save presets or delete presets. And you can simply do that by hitting the plus sign. And then we can enter a name for the preset, hit OK. And now we have stored this preset here. If you want to delete a preset, you have to select it first, then hit the minus button. But beware, there is no warning and there is no undo in random flow. So if you hit minus, the preset will be gone. Saving presets is useful because you can always use them as a starting point for other objects. Also, if you have settings that you like and you want to explore those a little bit further, make sure to save a preset first. Since there are no undo steps in random flow, Saving presets is the only way to go back to a previous state. Below the operator presets we have the solver option and the path option. The solver option is the method used to create the panels. And path is related to those methods but it will not work with the radial option. Sampling according to the documentation is less accurate but can be faster if you create a lot of panels. You can also run into issues if you have triangles in your mesh or if you have any tight areas. Recursive on the other hand is supposed to be more accurate but it can also be slower if you have a lot of panels in your scene. And radial is an option to create a certain pattern and it's one of my favorite options in random flow because it's pretty easy to get nice looking results with this. So like I said, the path option only works with sampling and recursive. And by the way, there is not that much difference between recursive and sampling. Sometimes if you switch between those two, like right now, you won't even see a difference. The path option by default is set to none, which means that random flow will use both long edges and short edges to create the panels. However, if you prefer to favor shorter edges, you can use this option here and you will get a result like you see on the left here. So this is nice for quickly creating, I don't know, wall panels, for example, and longest will use the longer edges and this can be useful to create floorboards, something like that. And like I said, the path option only works with recursive and sampling. If you switch to radial, radial is a certain pattern it only creates one particular pattern and it doesn't work with any of these options here. Next we have the size mode and here you can pick between percent and number and this really is just up to you. It's a personal preference. If you prefer to define the size of the panels in percent, you can stick with this option or you can switch to number if you want to. And if you switch that to number, you can see the panel size changes to an integer and if you set this to percent, it's going to display the panel size in percent down here. The panel amount is the amount of islands that is created. By default, this is set to 100%. You can change that if you want to. And over here on the right, you can invert whatever you have set here with this arrow button. I personally always keep this at 100%. What that means is if I also switch the panel size to zero, what this means is that if this is set to 100%, one island will be created per selected polygon. So in this particular case, we're creating one island for each of the polygons. And the reason for that is because I set the panel size to zero. If the panel size is set to zero, that means that one panel will cover one island, aka polygon. And if you increase the panel size at some point, the panels will cover more than one island. 
if you have a lot of geometry, changing this number by small amounts will have an immediate effect. More or less, if you only have a few polygons, you will need to crank this up a little bit before you can see the effect. So theoretically, with the panel amount set to 100% and the panel size to 0%, you would think that if you bring this down to 50%, you would get exactly half the eye lens that you get with 100%, but that's not quite true. It's all very random. So there's no real way to control the exact amount of panels. The panel size is obviously the size of the panels, and the bigger you make this number, the more eye lens will be covered by a single panel. With the panel seed, you can randomize what you created so far. The next option is subdivision, and here you can add additional cuts. So if you don't have a lot of geometry, in this case, I have a few polygons already. So you want to be careful not to crank this up too high, but you can create more geometry by using the cuts option. And this option basically is like the subdivision modifier in Blender. All the options from solver down to subdivision relate to the creation and randomization of the panels. Smoothing does not really belong in this section here. Everything below subdivision is for modifying whatever you created further. The smoothing option is supposed to work on rounded geometry. It works together with the smooth falloff. What this is supposed to do is to smooth out jagged geometry if you create panels on a cylinder, for example, or if you have round areas on your objects and you create panels on those. I usually end up using the shade smooth and auto smooth function in Blender to get rid of any jaggedness. Next, we have margin and thickness and depth. Depth is simply the height of the panels and depth will create the same height for each of the panels. If you want to randomize the height, you have a height option down here. We're going to talk about that in a minute. By default, thickness is switched on and margin is switched off. Both thickness and margin create a gap between the panels. Thickness creates this tapered kind of look and you cannot see through the gaps. Personally, I prefer to use the margin option and this will also create a gap between the panels. You can use it to, let me just zoom out a little bit and increase the panel size here. You can use margin to create effects like this. You can also use it together with thickness to get a look like this, for example. Next is the cut method, and I can't really demonstrate this on a flat object. So I'm just going to delete these panels here, select this object here, and let's make sure that all the polygons are selected. I'm going to subdivide the geometry a little bit and maybe increase the size. So on an object like this, you can see that we have gaps everywhere on the sharp corners. If you don't want that, you can use the cut method to close those gaps. And we have two options here. One is angle and one is wraparound. Both of these work together with the cut angle, although for wraparound, I never really have to use the angle here. Angle is switched on by default and right now we can't see an effect. Maybe if I increase that a little bit, you can see here at the top, the gaps are getting closed. Now, depending on the geometry you have and the settings in general, this sometimes will work well and sometimes it won't work very well. As you can see here, some of the gaps are still remaining at the top. The only way to change that is by changing the settings for the random creation of the panels. You could try changing the panel seed, for example. Now all of the all of the gaps here at the top are closed. Wrap around is your one click solution to closing all of the gaps. Most of the time I use that. You can use the cut angle, but it usually gives me weird results. So I never really touch the angle when I use the wraparound option. Next, we have the bevel offset, and this can be used to add chamfers to the corners of the panels. You have a minimum and a maximum value here. If you set both of these to the same number, you will get even bevels. And if you set them to different numbers, the bevels will be randomized for each corner. Right here at the bottom, we have a clamp overlap. And this is for when you use the bevel offset, it's supposed to prevent overlapping of the geometry. 
Switching that on and off can give you different results depending on the settings you have up here. So if I set this to extreme numbers and switch off clamp overlap, you can see the difference here. So you can play around with that if you want to, to get different looks. We can also round the corners off by adding some segments here. And like the cuts option, you want to be careful because this can create a lot of geometry. We also have an angle limit option here that we can use in some cases to adjust the bevels. I just set this to the default of 30 degrees. And of course you also have a bevel seed and this will only work if the bevel offset minimum and maximum are set to different values. So we can change the seed on those corners here and get different effects. I just switch that all off. Now let's have a look at clear faces and I think I'll just go back to one of my flat objects here. Let's use this one again. Random flow creates the panels with the top surface and side surfaces. And if I switch off that plane here, if you take a look at the bottom, we don't have any faces down here. And that makes perfect sense because if you create a lot of panels and you don't need the bottom surfaces, that's a lot of polygons you can save. Let me just delete these panels here and I'm going to create those again. So what clear faces does is it removes either the side faces or the top faces. By default it is set to none, which means that both the top surfaces and the side surfaces are created. However, if you want to, you can choose to only create the inner surfaces, which is the sides, or you can only create the top surfaces. And this is an option that I do use sometimes. One example would be if I use wrap around, and I get weird looking results and geometry that looks a bit warped, which can be difficult and time consuming to repair. I tend to create just the top surfaces and then extrude those. Because random flow does not create any bottom surfaces, I like to use this outer option sometimes if I want to make further modifications to the panels I create with box cutter. Say I want to add additional cutouts or add screw holes. And that usually doesn't work very well with geometry that is not closed. So in that case, I would switch this to outer and then I can extrude those flat faces down. Or what I could also do is just set the depth to zero, which means that the panels will lie flat on the base geometry. And then I can extrude those up and use Boolean operations to create additional cutouts, for example. I'm going to set this back to none and let's add a little bit of depth here. Next we have the height option. You can use this alone or you can leave depth switched on. I can bring this down and simply work with the height option down here. So you can see using the height option we can create different heights for the panels. If you only want one height for the panels, I would go for the depth option because I don't have to set both of these numbers to the same value in order to get the same height. We also have a height seed option. We can use that to randomize the height of the panels. I'm going to switch that all off again and increase the depth a little bit. Next we have a triangulate option. And this is nice sometimes because you can break up the look that you have like here. So this can create additional nice effects. Next we have the material index and this can be used to copy materials from your base geometry onto the panels. I have never really used that so I don't know how this works exactly. But according to the documentation that's what it's supposed to do. We've already talked about the clamp overlap. This only works with the bevel offset. We also have an option down here to create materials for the inner and outer faces. And these are the faces we can switch on and off up here. So if I check that and select my panels here, if I go to the material properties, you can see two materials have been created, one for the inner faces and one for the outer faces. Then we have a clip center and this I'm going to demonstrate on this object here again. So I'll just create some panels here. For this object I've set up a symmetry modifier so I can use the clip center. If I switch that on, you can see nothing happens. We need to increase the clip distance and at some point the center lines will get welded. And you can pick the axes 
which you want to weld. By default, all of them are checked. We also have a center offset and an offset range. I'm not sure what this is useful for, but what you can use it for is, and it requires that the clip distance is higher than zero. If you bring this down and make this a negative number and then play around with the with the offset range, you can get results like this. Maybe I need to decrease that a little bit more so you can see the effect a little bit better. So you can do things like that. Now on this object, it doesn't look very good, but this is the kind of effect you can create using the center offset and the offset range. I'm going to switch that off again. And for the last option, I'll just use this object again. We also have a limited dissolve option here. And if I switch on my overlays, you can see we have a lot of geometry on this object. And maybe we don't need all of that geometry. So what we can do is check the limited dissolve option here. And this will clean up the panels and remove all of that extra geometry. You also have a maximum angle as soon as you switch that on. Sometimes you may want to use that to get the effect that you want. In this case, I won't need the maximum angle because we only have this flat object here. You can clean up the geometry at any time after you created those panels because random flow also provides a cleanup option. If you open the random flow window, you will find it under extras and cleanup. And this will not only give you the limited dissolve option, but also a couple of other things you can use to clean up the geometry. If you check any of these options, you won't see a result first unless you hit OK. And you can then use the F9 key to bring up this window again and make further changes if you want to. So here you can remove the geometry, you can remove doubles. You can also remove zero area faces and zero length edges if you want to. We still have an option to use the clip center here. Now on this object, I don't have a symmetry modifier, so it won't have an effect. At the bottom here, we have an option to remove words with only two connecting edges. So that is all of the options that you have to create random panels with random flow. There's one more thing I want to show you, which is the radial option. And for this, I'm going to create a cube and I'll just subdivide the geometry a little bit. And before I use that radial option, I'll set up symmetry for this cube here. I can do this by creating a mirror modifier and doing this manually, or I can use random flow to do that. I need to go back to object mode. And if I open the random flow window, you can see we have an auto mirror option here. If I click on that, we will get this eyedropper cursor and also a window with some instructions. First, we have to pick an area with the left mouse button, or we can cancel the operation by hitting the escape key or using the right mouse button. I'm going to just left click on this top area here at the front. And you can see the window changes. Now we can select the axes. So I can simply type in X, Y and Z. If I don't like that, I can hit the R key to reset that. Again, I can cancel the operation with the escape key or the right mouse button, or I can confirm by hitting spacebar or the enter key. In this case, I'm going to select all of the axes and hit spacebar. And you can see this creates this mirror modifier here. And if I tap into edit mode, you can see we have our geometry selected here and everything's being mirrored over front to back, left to right and top to bottom. So let's go ahead and create some random panels using the radial option here. And maybe I'll just switch off my overlays again. So maybe the panels are a bit small. Let's do something like this. So you can see with a simple mouse click, you get really nice patterns immediately. And by changing the seed, every time I, I change it, I get something that looks fairly, fairly nice. So this is one of my favorite options in random flow. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you again soon.